Um, so, so I thought um, in, in the closing session it would actually be nice to sort of leave on a high about the future of Civi CRM and um, you know on a positive note um, not that the last discussion was sort of a damper, but you know it was a good discussion, a robust discussion, as politicians generally say. Um, so yeah, so look, I, I wanted to present some of the new um, developments in the CV Serum community from a, an, an end user's perspective. So these are developments which you know really you you guys, um, this is for you, and uh, you should find exciting. So I've shamelessly just lifted screenshots of various blogs I've found, so there's no credit given. I'll, I have actually listed a couple of the links. So there is a new user interface coming for Civi CRM. Now, from my perspective, the Civi CRM interface has never changed ever since I've been working with Civi CRM, apart from you know, minor fields and things like that. So the new user interface is actually called Shortage, or the project is called Shortage. And I found out recently that it's actually named after the, the area or the hamlet or whatever, <laughs> where the, uh, the developers actually in, in England um, are actually based. So Shortage is an extension, so it's an add-on for your CIVI, and it radically rearranges the interface and presents it in a much more contemporary style. So that when your users, new users, log into it, they don't feel like they're stepping back 10 years. They feel like, oh, this is you know, modern, this is new, I, I can really start using this. Um, it's also mobile responsive, so those of you who love to use CV on their tablets, and I know at least one of the people in the audience who, who has done that at a training session. Um, yeah, so mobile responsive as well, better Zoom support, so it's easier to click around. And its design is based on what's called Bootstrap 3. Um, we've actually heard this name quite a few times uh, at the conference, CompuCorp. Uh, there actually are two sort of luminaries or really big um, you know, giants in the community, and CompuCorp and Vita, are, and as well as uh, Fusion as well, Kudos, are another giant in the community who really do shoulder a lot of the development and move the CVCRM project forward in really interesting ways. So I really, hats off to these guys. So um, this is their company, um, and the, the project itself is available here. So this is the old dashboard for CVCRM. This is what everyone knows, everyone sees. Yep, nothing special. Uh, the new dashboard, this actually screenshot is, is, is only subtly different, but uh, the old contact record, and then we've got the new contact record. And the new contact record is actually a bit more, you can actually see the changes a bit more. And I'll show you a live demo of the site as well. Uh, some of the work that CompuCorp are actually doing, they're building a HR system, which is based on CV CRM. So it's in terms of uh, managing leave requests, uh, workflow for the organisation, staff, and things like that. And so they're really uh, trying to make it more easy to use for an organisational uh, level, not just for managing contacts, but actually managing staff. So uh, the idea is everyone would log in and start using it for workflows. Um, this is the uh, this is a screenshot I got for the the case case management system, which is is under development. Again, I'm not sure how up to date this is, but this is uh, a working screenshot, which looks actually quite different from what uh, Peter was showing earlier today. And case activities as well. So you know, when I look at this, I think, oh, this is actually looking really cool. You know, this is actually uh, you know bringing the system to a modern age. And I think it's um, sort of worthy of an appropriate graphic at that time to express how I feel when I see CVCRM getting a, basically a coat of paint. So I'll give you a quick demo. You, Francis. What would I do there, Francis? Okay, so this um, we run training sessions at uh, Agile Air to um, bring people up to speed on how to use Civi and uh, show them how it works. And we have a fictitious uh, website we use, you know, which is a non-profit roller derby. And so we, it, it shows all the, the different aspects. So I'm just going to log into this. It, I'm not actually logging into a customer site, is what I'm saying. So, come on. You having some trouble with the Wi-Fi? No. I just tweeted about the site to all the roller derby fans. <laughs> 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 Looks like a man. Yep. 
This is our great MBN we have. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so the extension is, um, is available for 4.6 and 4.7, and it's agnostic. So it's not, it's not, not Joomla, so <laughs> you'll be okay on Joomla. Yeah. yeah. Um, while that's loading, I'm not sure why it's so slow. Is anyone Snapchatting in the room or? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Okay. Or do you close the server down the office? Uh, it should be okay. Loading. You didn't tweet that everyone was going to be out of your office today, did you? No, there is a notice up though, a slower than usual response time. <laughs> Not a moment. Yeah. Um, while that's loading, what I might do is I'll just continue on the other part because I still need this to load anyway to show you the next part. So anyway, I'll come back to that. Um, so yeah, so um, so progress today, it's currently at um, um, 2.0 beta 3. Um, you can download it, and I've got a couple of links up here where you can download it from. And it's undergoing testing, feedback, and bug fixes. The um, the, people, the main developers who are working on it uh, were at the Civi London conference, and I actually expect that consumed a lot of their time, so development has sort of gone quiet recently. Um, I tracked back from the initial announcement, and it's been in, in the works for about 18 months. So it's not something which is just, you know, popped out of thin air. It's actually been worked on a long time. And uh, it's going to be, uh, my understanding, it's part of the core CVCRM project. Is that right, Eileen? Do you know? I think eventually it will ship with yep. core. So it's ship with core, and yes. It's the same extension that's up, that goes with Mosaic, right? Uh, yes, yeah. you can use it. It's not dependent, but yes. Um, yeah, so, so based on just tracking how that's going, I would actually expect, you know, it'll be generally available sort of Q1. Uh, next year, like that's available to everyone. But they do have sort of progressive releases available now that you can just download and install. And look, as long as you're okay with sort of, you know, a few little quirks here and there, it's fine, you know, and it works. So um, so there's a couple of uh, useful links. There's uh, where you can actually download the extension and the code, and there's a blog post which is an announcing it. Um, the version we're actually running when it loads on the demo is actually downloaded from this location and um, that, that's the location I found what's a stable installable version. Um, so if you want to install it for yourself. Um, it is a little bit frustrating. This link actually isn't particularly promoted very well but um, I tried lots of different ways of getting it and that was the best way that worked. Um, yeah, the, 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 the release, the version number of the, uh, the extension as well is a bit weird because I've got version 2 beta 3, but it seems they've actually rolled back and now they've still got 0.4 alpha 1 or something. If, if, so, people, if people try it, just sign up for a GitHub account and post the issue directly on the, on the GitHub um, place, space that the, yep. uh, the, the work's being done. Yeah. Yep, cool. I might, while that's loading, I'll just load up this one. Okay, so yeah, so here we have the uh, the new UI. And as you can see, you know, it looks fairly different. It's a bit washed out, unfortunately, because of the, the blue on the on the presentation, so it's not showing you lots of details. But um, if I go around and find a contact record like this... Yeah, possibly. Um, this is all demo data as well from standard um, CVCRM demo, so it's not real customers or anything. You haven't seen it over the owns? No. And probably just go find contacts. Oh, yeah, the advanced search screen has had a workover. So, you know, there you go. So things look a little bit nicer. I'll bring up this chap. Now I'm getting responsive. So. So yeah, so you know, down the instead of having the tabs across the top, you've got nice little tabs down the side. If the picture is uploaded for that person, it'll display up the top, so you get the name and the picture, so you go, oh yeah, cool, that's that chap. 
you know, you've got the details here as well. You've got the nice little navigation, which I guess has always been there. I actually didn't even know that you could navigate between contacts um, that way. So, you know, again, it's just a way of showing you what's coming. Okay, so, so that's there. All right, and the advanced, advanced search screen, again, has been given a bit of a workover as well. So just a bit easier to sort of, you know, navigate and present. And they've just presented some of the, the, um, the usual fields and a little bit differently. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, you're probably better on the YouTube video when this is uploaded. You'll be able to see the colour differences as well. Okay, so the, uh, the other part to the presentation I wanted to, um, to just show you, Q&A, no questions, that's great, um, is the, the next step, which is the new mailing editor. Now, this is actually more significant and probably has a wider impact um, than anything. And um, thanks to Mick, Mick has actually mentioned it and given a bit of demo as well. Um, the biggest bugbear that we find with uh, rolling out CVT any users, especially if they're coming from MailChimp or Campaign Monitor, is they feel like they're stepping back in time a bit. Because the, the mailing editor that's in Civi, it's good, it's functional, however, it's actually hasn't really progressed from an end user perspective for about five years. So, so the tools that it gives users isn't, isn't uh, keeping up to date with industry, basically. So I've just put some points up there about um, you know, the problems that people have with mailing editors. Um, can I just see a quick show of hands? How many people send out mailings through Civi? Yep, okay. Do you love that experience? No, lots, no? No, one's nodding. Okay, all right. So Mosaico is a, uh, it's a web service and it's also software and it's a free email template builder. So it's open source software so you can download and run it. You can also just go to the website and build your mail templates and then grab the HTML and put it directly into Civi. So you don't even need this extension uh, per se. You can actually use Mosaico right now without actually doing any work in your Civi because it generates HTML that you can send out, which is nice. Um, it does uh, provide two default mail templates, a fixed width one, so um, you know when everyone will get the same sort of width of their email, and it also provides a fluid one, so as people resize it, it'll expand. Um, some of the great things about Maseko, um, which you know are real bugbears currently with the existing mailer, you can grab an image of any size, any dimension, you know, and not even have to think about the dimension that needs to be in the newsletter, and you just drag it into place, and it will go right. This image here needs to be 200 by 100 pixels, and it'll go crop, bang, and put it there for you. As opposed to you going, right, I'm going to upload this 5 megapixel image, which is 5,000 pixels by 4,000, and now your newsletter looks like, you know, a couple of metres wide. So it does solve that problem really nicely. Um, it has drag and drop ele elements as well, so you, instead of actually thinking in terms of HTML and CSS, you actually go, right, I want three images. So I'll just drag the three images element across, bang, and off you go. You can override the default styles. Um, one of the best things, which is probably goes under the radar a lot until your boss comes in and shows you the newsletter that you just sent them on their Outlook and how that looks, is that it's been pre-tested and it's compatible with all the major mail clients. So if someone is using you know, a really old mail client, there's a good chance it'll actually look not too bad using Mosaico. It also has fixed template design, so you can give the, the job of someone sending out newsletters who doesn't know HTML, who maybe is a little bit careless, and, or maybe they're very uh, creative and, with their picking of images, and they don't want to do testing, but you can actually be sort of re reassured that by using the templates, they can't really stuff things up too bad. Okay, so the initial release of the integration with CV CRM uh, was February 2016, uh, much fanfare. To that release and that announcement. Um, it was developed initially by uh, Vita Consulting and with contributions by CompuCorp and the CVCRM core team, I think, as well, as we mentioned before, have been, um, you know, being paid to make it work in Civi. Um, I'm not sure in terms of where the priorities are in the Civi project, but, you know, from our perspective, this is pretty up there in terms of a priority to get things done. Yeah, Eileen's nodding. Cool. All right. So, um, we actually tried version one and we deployed it on a couple of client sites and it was functional but had a few bugs and yeah, quite a few bugs but it was actually still a step above the default mailing experience. So it had a template design, you can drag, drop, resize images, send, um, send out newsletters and get a consistent result. Um, version two um, has really been, uh, polished up and it's, it has completely replaced the mailing workflow experience that you, need, you see in CV. Um, the cool thing is you can actually use both Mosaico and the default mailing 
um, system in your CV today without any problems. They can both interact and you can send mailings out with both of them. Um, there is one thing which I know down the bo bottom, and depending on where you're hosting your website, um, it does require software on the server. It's called Image Magic, and you'll, you'll find out pretty quickly if it doesn't work, because when you enable the extension, it actually tells you. Um, but that software crops the images on the server. So it's free software. It's, you know, two-minute install for the admin. All right. So there's a little animation here. Oh, so this is just someone building their newsletter using that drag and drop interface. Yes. Um, just to clarify for everybody, I was shown version one. Okay. okay. Um, version two. Yep. It was, it was, um, the, uh, I was discussing this with someone here today. Is it true with version two? I mean, it does kind of, it's more than just a template builder. It yes. Kind of, it changes the workflow. Yes, it is. It is. They've revamped the workflow. Two, can you still select the option to just go back to an HTML? Ah uh, yes, well the, the two mailing systems are in, available in the same city, so yes you can. Yep. I've got it installed and it's got a new drop down from the menu, so you've got yep. it. Yep. <laughs> you can go to the traditional one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Alright, let's do a demo. So, so here we are. So, so this is the uh, this is the the new workflow for the mailing. So, this is the new design. You know, very stepped. Um, let's see. That's um, 50th anniversary. Oh no, they're probably 30 years old. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, they're young. Okay. So, yep, send to the entire team. Cool. And then we just go continue. And we'll select a template. So, uh, what we're seeing here is actually some of the default, um, the previous mailings I've actually set up, and some of them which I've saved as a template as well. So, you can create your own templates and just save them, and they're just instantly available here. So, you can s s select them next time. So, it gets rid of that whole drop down notion. So, I'll just start with an empty one, and it will load. All right, so, so on the left-hand side, um, these are the, um, the elements that uh, just come out of the box. Um, you can actually build your own elements and brand them and put um, your designs in place. Uh, it, it's not a lot of work. You actually just write HTML. It's one big HTML file, and that's where you design all your elements, and then they just appear on the left-hand side. So it's something that you know someone with HTML skills and you know maybe half a day to a day could actually do and set up. So it's a nice way of packaging CVCRM and then branding it for the organisation and then giving them all the elements to drag and drop. Uh, we've done that for a, a customer, so they can just build out their uh, mailings, which is a nice way of doing it as well. Because it really changes the approach and the discussion from saying, oh, okay, um, what sort of mailing templates do you want? And then having to design them and then giving that to them. And that they're the fixed sort of design. I always miss that spot. Oh, you just click add. Yep. Um, to here are a set of elements you can use. And then they can actually just build their design as they want. So I'll just click on that upload. And go to desktop. Oh. Presentations, Muppets. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. <laughs> there we go. How many images of Bobby Bear do you actually have? He's such a, a, a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, with that image, it's put it in the right dimensions. Okay, in that spot. If I can grab this one as well. I'll grab this one here. Use with Kermy, put in Ralph, Ralph the dog. That's so that one didn't um, go quite right. That's a good example. Just when you click that little upload icon, does it go to browse? 
just on your file. That's your file system. So, and then. But if you have uploaded ones already, can you then browse on the server? Nope. To That's a good feature request, but no. Yeah, what's in the gallery there? Oh, okay. Ooh, recent. Oh, there's my other Muppets I uploaded before. <laughs> Thank you. Every day, did, mate. mate, that's my life. <laughs> Story of my life. So, yeah. So, build up. And so, you know, composing your mailings and setting that up now actually goes back to being a, a fun exercise. And you think about the creativity of it as opposed to the tedium of it. And, uh, yeah, it's good. I like it. There. Okay, so there we have it. Um, on the left hand side, you, you notice you have these blocks. So this is where you build out your newsletter. And then you have the content. This did actually take me a little while to get, sort of get the hang of. So depending on what you've selected, the content will change. So it actually just changed that. And then you can also override the style. So if I want that button to be, you know, maybe bright green, because green is a good call to action sort of color. Um, and I can go down here and change that color and go, yep, I want it to be bright green and maybe I want this, uh, this text here or the background the paragraph to be dark blue or gray, you know, just as an example. Okay. And then I can, uh, You'd go, be able to save all that as your template, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I can go, right, I'm just going to send that as an email myself send and done so I've got a test email now <laughs> yes yeah sorry I'll show you you probably won't see it but you'll just have to appreciate the Muppet so yeah so it loads and it looks fine, and it's actually responsive, so all the images are nice. Now, if I had tried to do a, a, a presentation and a demo of putting together a, a newsletter template and then showing you what it looked like on my mail client, yeah, I would have been scrolling to the right and apologising a lot and things like that. So, yeah, I think that in itself is actually quite cool. Um, yeah, so now that that's done, I can then proceed to the next step, and I just click on Continue, and I can schedule the mail or send it immediately. And so you, this is not only just the mailing template, template editor, but also a refined workflow process then for sending the mailings. So yeah, so that's really what I wanted to do um, to show you with that, uh, that presentation. Yes, there are some more features to coming, uh, coming along as well. So this, this is me just reading through the blog. Um, if you've ever used MailChimp, uh, MailChimp has a really great feature called RSS to Mail, so you can automate sending out newsletters based on an RSS feed from your web website. Um, that feature's coming, it's on the, on the plans. Um, I think they currently do have A-B testing set up right now. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so A-B testing is available now using Mosaico as well. Um, they've also got other plans, in which I was really excited to read the last two, so scheduled reminders, but most importantly, system email. So being able to build out and replace um, um, CVCRM's system emails using Mosaico <laughs> would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, so the version I, um, I demonstrated, now that one isn't no witchery to get that version, it's just straight from the extensions directory, and that was fairly straightforward to download and install. Some more information, some various links. These slides will be posted up there as well, so you can, you can grab it. And um, any questions? Questions? Um, for that one, I would actually fix the image, you know. It's in the wrong spot because it's trying to be that. So, you, yeah. Um, yep. Yes? Justin, that version works only with 4.7, is that right? Uh, it, it works with 4.7 out of the box. Um, you can apply it. They do say for 4.6 you have to apply a couple of patches for it to work. But it, yeah, from my understanding, those patches are already in 4.6 now, so it should just work. But there's, they've got links on the GitHub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, they're trying to make it work yeah. there too. Any other questions? Yes. I do not know about that I'm one. I'm not aware of particular. I can probably buy it and send some details to Justin so we can put that out. But yeah, just 
Yep. And now it's been yeah, overrunning like uh, the last eight bars. Yes. Oh. So very yep. different. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Okay. Um, we're at. We're actually at at time now, and just just a little bit over. So. Um, so this is just the closing session, so a quick, uh, few quick words. First of all, um, oh, I've put it on auto. Okay, so, uh, so thank you to the sponsors, um, whom without, you know, financially it would have been a struggle to, uh, to put up the conference. Um, here we are. Um, by all means, thank you a lot uh, for Peter for coming along with Gemma as well. Their expertise in particular for this conference is really fantastic. So. For, for those of you who haven't picked up on it yet, they actually flew over from New Zealand, um, especially for this conference. Um, so yes, by all means, talk to them about your CV CRM requirements. And also thank you to Eileen, who is a, you know, I regard her as a core CV CRM um, team member, but she is a gun developer. And also thank you to Seamus as well, who came to the conference to represent CV CRM development. So thank you. Um, also, thank you to the Greens who actually paid for Seamus's time to help organise the conference. So, you know, Seamus, I don't know what excuse he gave them, but yes, he actually <laughs> did work on their dime. Now, there's a special thank also to Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith is the, the chap at the back on the camera. He actually flew down from Queensland on his own time, um, is recording this with his own equipment and is editing it and will make it available to us just for the conference attendees and as part of giving back to the community. So, thank you a lot, Andrew. And uh, thank you all for coming here today as well, and thank you for supporting CV Serum in Australia. I, um, I genuinely hope that um, you know you did learn some tips, um, you know got some ideas, some enthusiasm, um, you know, and we'll look at your own CV Serum installation um, in a different way, and uh, we'll maybe actually you know make it work a bit harder for you as well. Okay, so that's really it. That's the end of the conference. Um, we. Some of us are going to go and have some beers at the Realm Hotel, so everyone is more than welcome to come along. And it's the Realm, that's where Eileen's staying, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to say thank you to Justin. So, um, thank you. How many of you only registered for the conference this month? No. It takes nerves of steel to run the conference. It takes a huge amount of work and it takes a lot of courage to hang in there to see yeah. all those people who registered at the last minute. We've tried to run City Cons in Australia before and no one else has shown the nerves of steel to, to come through and pull this off. So this is really fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you.